Hello and welcome everybody. My name is Melanie Dizon. I'm the Director of Education and Content at the Dave Finney Foundation and I'm here today with Dr. Osterbahn. How are you doing? Thank you. Thank you. I'm doing well. Thank it's you for having me here. <laughs> and yeah. where are you? Let's tell everybody where you're calling in from. Well, I, I'm in Rotterdam, the Netherlands. So and awesome. yeah, it's a great town. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I think it sounds fabulous. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so can you tell us a little bit about yourself, your work, your family life, sort of the, the big picture, and then we'll get into all the other juicy stuff. Yes, with pleasure. Uh, well, so thank you for inviting me today to share both my personal and professional story. So my name is Anneline and um, I'm 40 years old and a proud mother of four kids. Uh, I work as a medical doctor for uh, like four days a week and dedicate the rest of my time uh, to my research project on the women and Parkinson's disease. Um, I got diagnosed with Parkinson's disease about seven years ago. And I think it's the combination of my it's the combination of my background in gynecology together with my own personal experience that has made yeah, me realize that I was like kind of called to do this research and be an advocate for young women with Parkinson's disease. Yeah. Yeah. So first of all, how old are your kids? The oldest one is 11. That's Philine. It's a girl. And then there are two boys at 10 and seven. And the youngest one is Josephine. And she's just turned one. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that sounds fabulous. Mm -hmm. um, you, that's a busy, I mean, that alone is busy. So you uh, must yeah. be just filled up every minute of the day. Yes. Yes. That's true. And you like it <laughs> that way? And really efficiently, but uh, I manage and I like it. I really like it a lot. Yes. They give so much energy. So yeah. 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 That's great. Okay. So yeah. can we talk a little bit about your uh, diagnosis? Like what, what prompted you to look into it, what happened first and, and what was your process like in terms of getting that official diagnosis, the care you got, all that kind of stuff? Well, it, it only took me like three months from initial science to diagnosis. And I, th it, it's, I think it's due to my profession because I did, did a lot of surgery and um, I it started with a frozen shoulder and that really interfered with my job. So I was really keen on that. Look, yeah, diving into it. And um, I had some rigidity also in my lower left lower arm. And I believe, yeah, it was, I think it's just a combination of my medical background and my determination to find the immediate answer that ate my diagnosis so timely, but also therefore it was kind of a shocker that it came so, yeah, in like in such short no period, I got this terrible diagnosis that I really didn't expect. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And you, so it sounds like, I mean, you don't have that sort of look back where people say, oh, I had experienced symptoms for a really long time. Yours were very sort of motor related and mm -hmm. uh, just kind of came on quickly. Yeah. And then I just, I visited, I, I, I eventually got the diagnosis Parkinson's disease, but uh, after I visited a physiotherapist, I didn't have any symptoms at all for, for a while. So I really didn't feel sick at all, but still I had this diagnosis and had to deal with it. And uh, of course I was shocked to hear these life-changing words, you have Parkinson's. And, uh, but really from day one, I felt strong and ready to fight. And um, well, up till today, I, I've been literally fighting back because I practice boxing and uh, that's a really nice thing to do. And uh, I, I exercise at least like five times a week uh, because I consider exercise as the most important form of therapy. And, and last month, I even ran the Rotterdam Marathon, the complete marathon for the second Excellent. time. So that was really cool. Yeah. Nice. Congrats. That's yeah. great. Thank you. Did you, so when you got the diagnosis, did you start medication right away? No, not immediately. I, only after, I think after one and a half years. Okay. And it was just last time that I went to the pharmacist that I was kind of shocked that she got me like a shopper full of <laughs> boxes. And I thought I was really like, OK, uh, is it for is it for a year or so? Or and then she said, no, it's only for three months. And then I was OK. And so disease is progressing because, you know, I tend to work out a lot and I, I'm almost symptom free all day. But uh, still, uh, the the first 
time I started medication, it was like one tablet a day. And now it's like a lot. <laughs> so a lot. It oh. was kind of confrontating. Yeah. 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 And um, you say you work out five times a week. You do boxing, you run. What are some other things that you do? Uh, I also play field hockey at a quite a high level still. And I play golf. And um, yeah, actually, and I uh, do uh, biking. Uh, I said it's a race bike race. Uh, yeah, I, I, and I just love all sports with the balls. So. Oh, nice. You do with it all. Is there, is there anything that's impacted or are you just like, man, no, I'm feeling, feeling good. No, I feel quite good. Uh, actually, even with the heavy duration and like the marathon running and the, the heavy boxing, I think, uh, and heavy lifting, it's, it gives me so much mental power also and keeping my strength and using my whole body. I think it also really helps with your coordination and forcing me to use my Parkinson's size. Always the way I, I yeah, describe it. It's, a, it's mostly, I'm most impact on my left side and I tend not to use this arm, but since I box and uh, I keep uh, challenging myself also like in the, uh, um things in the house i use screwdrivers with my left hand or oh, brush yeah. my teeth with my left hand i since i do that on purpose uh, i i noticed that it helps and I, I use it in spontaneous ways also more often so yeah yeah so what were those early days like you had three little little kids right when you mm -hmm. were diagnosed because you're you're seven yeah. years and your your third one is seven right what yeah. was that like uh, and how did you, or have you told the kids and, you know, what was that whole experience? Yeah, it was difficult in the beginning. Uh, I didn't tell them because as I said, I didn't have that much, that many symptoms and I just, yeah, lived a normal life and uh, I really didn't feel sick. I still don't actually, but uh, I live with it, but I don't feel sick. But, um, yes, of course, sometimes my symptoms can be annoying and it can, interfere with being feeling like a complete mother like um having to um uh, switch diapers with a baby turning over and over and rounds and rounds it's quite it's for a, no a normal mother also already a challenge but for me it's really challenging so the most important thing is to stay calm and i think i still am able to live a normal life but I think it's also due to the fact that we apply lots of humor to situations like it just helps sometimes to just poke, poke fun of yourself or laugh about silly symptoms and look at the lighter side instead of, uh, yeah, making it feel heavy or, yeah. So before your fourth child, you said that you did a lot of research on how pregnancy might impact your symptoms and progression. So mm -hmm. Um, what did you learn and how much of that turned out to be true or false or what surprised you the most while, you know, being pregnant um, while having Parkinson's that fourth mm -hmm. time? Well, actually, the most important thing I learned was that there's a really gigantic research gap around women and Parkinson's disease. And this is this definitely uh, accounts also for pregnancy and Parkinson's. And we all know that women have been neglected in medicine for a long time and treated like men. but we are just, we are not small men and men don't get pregnant. Small so. men, I love <laughs> No, we're just, we're not just small men and men right. don't get pregnant. So my search just left me without proper answers. And it was said like the only thing I found uh, well, uh, because I was really concerned about disease progression, already having three kids to take care of. Um, it was said that that 50% of women would show disease progression, but it was unclear uh, why and how, and did it recover? Um, did these women take medication or didn't they? Uh, this was not described. So it was like um, not finding any answers made the decision to have another baby really a difficult one and even anxious one for me. And uh, yeah, I was afraid not to be able to take care of the baby uh, yeah, in case you deteriorate too much. And But still we decided to go for it because yeah, and sort of the lack of evidence, beautiful, beautiful. Beautiful. lack of evidence give you yeah, a little also, bit more. I, I, I kind of let my physiotherapist convince me a little bit because I just ran a marathon before the last uh, baby and uh, also yeah, four years ago. And she said, well, you can run a marathon so you can also uh, 
uh, uh, be pregnant again because you you'll manage. And uh, I thought, oh, that sounds quite uh, like uh, that makes sense. So <laughs> yeah, she she try, she kind of uh, convinced me that I could uh, could do it, but it was it was kind of scary. And it, even in the course of pregnancy, uh, disease did pr- progress. I, I I really got more symptoms, more tremor. Um, and my dis- my medication had to be doubled, like that, like from four times a day to eight times a day. And uh, that did yeah, that I- feel? Did you feel the the um, increase in symptoms quite early on in your pregnancy, or was that a while in? Or uh, it was later. In mm-hmm. the in the beginning, I, yeah, I, I was vomiting a lot, so that didn't help because yeah, you just didn't take up the med- medication. So that was a real challenge. But that that was a problem in all my pregnancies. So that wasn't new. But then from a week of 26 or and onwards, I think when the belly was really growing, I just didn't uh, manage to sleep well. And I think, yeah, from, from the moment I had Parkinson's disease, I noticed that it's not sleeping well for having poor nights of sleep is really impactful on your symptoms. So um, I think looking back, the, the, the progression in pregnancy was really due to feeling very fatigued and yeah, poor nights of sleep. And when Josephine was born, she was immediately really a well sleeping baby. So I slept the first night. It was so great to sleep a whole <laughs> night. And also I'm a belly sleeper. So I got to turn on my belly and whew, I, the next morning I really felt so relieved. And already I could have my dosage again. It was really like a miracle. <laughs> oh wow, that that's yeah. a good turnaround. That's that's the sign mm-hmm. of somebody very healthy going into to pregnancy. Mm-hmm. Um, was there anything else that you changed, uh, medication wise or activity wise, um, during your pregnancy? Yeah, before pregnancy, I had to change my medication, and that's just uh, a thing. Uh, yeah, I had to do it because of a lack of evidence. Um, the only med- medicine that seems to be um, safe is levodopa and monotherapy. So, and I, I was using primary pexel. It's a, a yeah, dopamine agonist. So I, I, I had to stop and it was quite difficult because I already was using a high dosage. So I had to uh, have a real scheme to lower and lower that and then increase the levodopa to find a new balance. So I, I think it took me like, two to three months to get a new uh, stable situation before I got to become pregnant. And then the levodopa was, was, yeah, already from the beginning wasn't really enough. I think with the agonist, I had this like re, re, uh, this constant working tablet, constantly working tablet all day long. And the levodopa is more like fluctuating. So that annoyed me a lot <laughs> already from the beginning. Yeah, yeah definitely. So, um, what is some of that notable research that's out there on pregnancy and Parkinson's? I mean, obviously a gap exists, but Mm -hmm. what are some of the things that you feel confident now, uh, talking to people who want to get pregnant and have Parkinson's? What are some things that you're a little more clear on than others? Mm -hmm. Well, I think, and I know because I've been using so much levodopa and there, there there are some nice reviews that summarize the data from the case reports that that exist, that levodopa is really a safe choice in pregnancy. And I would uh, advise women not to stop their medication in, in case they really uh, do need medication. Um, I think, and I hope that we can find out in the future that the dopamine agonist is also safe and um but for now, I would say there's not enough significant evidence, but uh, also around um, breastfeeding, it's just, yeah, I think it would be safe to breastfeed, probably, but we don't know. And it's, uh, these are also things like many women in Africa, for, in, uh, for instance, they, they um, do breastfeed. And we, yeah, it, in, as we can, as soon as we can get these data from these women and uh, about their children, uh, we can tell more about whether breastfeeding is safe. I, yeah, I hope to find out in the future. You mean uh, with, um, levodopa or you mean the dopamine? Agonist? Yeah, with lo- levodopa at, at least. Okay. And then also the other types of medication. Yeah. yeah. Um, what else? What else? What, what other questions do you wish you had the answer to? 
Um, yeah, well, also management protocol. There are no guidelines, no management protocol. So I was pregnant. Uh, I was working in an academic medical center, an academic medical center um, with all, yeah, most um, uh, knowledge, but around this topic we were like it was a blank so we had to make a plan uh, with the yeah it, it's really it was really difficult so we were just uh, considering things what can be a, an issue well I, I visited an anesthesiologist because some med some like medication for nausea or other things it's better not to prescribe to a person with Parkinson's disease so we have been talking about that and it just made me feel a little bit more safe to, even though we didn't have answers to do, ask ourselves some questions and be prepared at least. Um, yeah, so I think it's just good to have a proper uh, healthcare team around you when you, in case you consider pregnancy, uh, people you, f if, yeah, you feel safe with and just have some knowledge at least about Parkinson's disease and and uh, yeah, the kinds of med medication that we, uh, that's good for us. <laughs> mm -hmm. And yeah. so you said that you did notice progression. Did that stick with you after the baby was born? Did you feel like, oh, it was just like an increase in symptoms, but that sort of went away after, or did it feel like, wow, you kind of progressed a couple of years in those? No, that's so I'm happy that didn't happen. Uh, because at the end of pregnancy, I was really afraid. I thought, if this is going to be the new status, uh, it, it's really has progressed a lot. Then, may, uh, no, yeah, the, I was really, really anxious about about that. But then after delivery, it really, I, I told, as I told you, the, after one night already, I felt much better. But then from two weeks uh, after Josephine was born, I started to work out already. It's a little bit early, but I was really determined. To become fit again and i think i'm i feel more uh fit, physically more fit than before pregnancy actually at this moment wow so no yeah and that's also why i ran the marathon or uh, i wanted to do this this year again because i know when i have such a an event in the future i have to train a lot and i know how well i good it made me feel like four years ago so i just wanted to achieve that again and yeah, I made, I made it. So, yeah. Yeah. So what do you think that, uh, well, what is your, um, I don't know how much you know about the medical system in the U S or, mm -hmm. but what do you think that movement, even movement disorder specialists sort of get wrong about women and pregnancy? Well, I think many, many doctors or healthcare providers around people with Parkinson's are afraid of pregnancy and the combination of pregnancy Parkinson's disease just because they don't know. Uh, Do they tend to I, err on the side of like, oh, I don't think you should get pregnant? Yeah, that's what I hear. Uh, like uh, I'm on all these social media, like Facebook groups and all that. And I, I, I tend to hear, um, um, yeah, some women uh, speak about their, uh, their doctor telling them not to become pregnant or advise them not to, or family members telling them not to, or the, but I think that's really sad because a child wish is really a, a deep wish and it's so beautiful to have children. And I, yeah, especially after my last experience, yeah, I think it, we should not tell women they cannot have a baby with Parkinson's disease. And right. of course we need more data and more information in the future, but there's also no evidence that it's harmful. Um, of course, uh, being a woman yourself, you need to feel confident and, yeah, feel, yeah, it's your own decision. But uh, yeah, I hope really w women in the future can make a more uh, informed decision than I did. Had yeah, to I mean, it sounds like we could use some, um, you know, extra training for movement disorder specialists around women and and uh, yes, Parkinson's and getting that fellowship or something. Yeah. Right? Yes. Yeah. I also did a survey in the Netherlands about this topic around among women between 20 and 60 concerning all life stages and hormonal in impact on the Parkinson's symptoms. And uh, I hope to get a paper out really soon about concerning this topic and also yeah, add some uh, uh, things around women and Parkinson's in guidelines 
um, yeah, and we will, we will start with some expert opinions and then we start, we will uh, get to some movement forward. But right. there, yeah, there are more and more um, researchers in the world um, doing, uh, yeah, working on this topic uh, more yeah. and more. So it's, uh, yeah. Good. What about um, women in menopause, women with Parkinson's around menopause? What, what have you found? Um, what, what's happening in the research there? Yeah, that's also a really difficult topic. Um, everything that has been written up to today is really contradictory. That all the one study says the one thing and the other says the other thing. And, uh, yeah, of course, just thinking clear, um, logically, you would say, of course, a perimenopause, menopause is impactful for a woman. Everything. Uh, that's impactful on your phys physical condition, like even having a flu impacts our Parkinson's disease symptoms and the effectivity of our medication. This, of course, go through menopause is really impactful on your Parkinson's disease, but what to do about it, that's just not unknown. But I think that shouldn't say that women should not ask the questions and they, they should ask their healthcare providers and tell them about their symptoms and the, these influences. and. We should just learn from that. Even being heard or getting acknowledgement or uh, hearing uh, uh, other women suffer from this too, that already helps. But I think maybe we should uh, treat it with like hormonal uh, uh, replacement therapy instead of more levodopa or things like that. But it has all has not been done yet. So it's yeah, really so there's a no there's no. There's no studies or evidence on no, no, because there has hormone no replacement therapy has been uh, prescribed to women with Parkinson's, but um, all in uh, other stages of the perimenopause, all with different durations, all with different dosages. So it and there's so such small numbers, and so we need a really international collaborations and clinical trials to test this out. Yeah. Why is it so hard to get this done? Yeah, I I think because we have just really been neglected in clinical trials up to trials up till today, and the 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 topic of women's issues in in particular in whole the whole uh, me medical field uh, is just from a couple of years ago beginning to get under the attention of research. I don't know because they were all men, or <laughs> it's really the me men dominated world, but now women stand up for themselves and. Uh, I don't know. It's just uh, we started a battle and we are going to win. <laughs> yes. Um, did you have any experience or have had you have you had experience with people, women with pregnancy and DBS? Um, no, I don't know women that uh, that underwent DBS and, and pregnancy as well. Uh, no, I don't know. I when think it, it will happen much more in the future because DBS Finally, also in the Netherlands, uh, can be done without uh, or, or under general anesthetics, because that was made women really afraid of the procedure. So I think, uh, and also with the increasing age, maternal age, uh, we and the increase of the disease uh, incidence, we will see much more in the future. Yeah, yeah we have to. Uh, yeah, with the pregnancy registry, we can uh, follow up these women. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's a great segue. So what is PregSpark? And, yes. and how did you get involved with it? Yes, yeah, so PregSpark <laughs> is the uh, International Registry for Pregnancy and Parkinson's Disease. Um, it's my baby. <laughs> uh, I, I wanted to finish it earlier, but I've been working on it for years now um, because the, ideas, the idea already started uh, before when I was looking into literature and found there was nothing. Um, but it's it's a registry. Um, all women around the world who become pregnant and have a PD diagnosis can enroll at our website, uh, prexpark.com. Uh, it's from pregnancy and the spark of Parkinson's, of course. Um, and uh, the website is almost finished. Uh, women will receive questionnaires like every trimester of pregnancy and after delivery. Um, we will gather information around their general health, PD diagnosis, medication use, pregnancy outcome, of course, but also uh, their well-being, um, uh, being anxious or not, uh, the physical activity, like all the things I wanted to know about, uh, but 
didn't learn, get to learn. And um, of course, it, it can be, the questionnaires will be extensive, so we will not uh, demand them to fill up every question. So there will be ob ob obligatory questions and some they can just leave open if they want. Uh, and the women can uh, enroll from the beginning of pregnancy up to eight, way, eight weeks postpartum. So if they only hear about PrexPark after delivery, it's not a problem. Uh, but uh, we will end inclusion uh, eight weeks postpartum because the most important data for me uh, is still the data from pregnancy outcome, the, uh, how, yeah, the child, how is the child doing and, and all the questions about their medication, they can tell me afterwards as well. But I, I would most be most happy if women um, enroll in the beginning of pregnancy. Yeah. yeah. yeah and follow-up will be up to one to two years postpartum because also want to know what I want to know of course how is the mother also doing one year or two years later is how's the progression what, did it stay or what did she become uh yeah in her or old status again and also the children how do they because and immediately after delivery okay they were fine but how about later on it's also important for mothers to know yeah or parents <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Well, that's exciting not to learn so I want to, it will be an ongoing, continuous, uh, prospective registry. And uh, yeah, I'm really happy that we could make it happen. Yeah. Yeah. And then from there, hope to do, you know, like get some funding for clinical trials and that kind of thing. Yeah. Some have yeah. All this data. But it's se separate from the Brex Park. It's really only about the pregnancy. It's, but yeah, of yeah. course, our Women MPD uh, Research Line will... Uh, we'll try to um, collaborate internationally on clinical trials among that topic, but this is really only about uh, pregnancy and we want to uh, eventually with the data, we will uh, get, get management guidelines out there yeah. and information for women they really need. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is there anything that uh, you want to talk about that I haven't asked about? No, I don't think so. <laughs> okay. Like I think we got it covered. It. Okay, good. <laughs> well, uh, the work you're doing is so important. And uh, like you said, there's uh, this isn't going anywhere. So there's going to be a lot of women that are going through this and wondering, you know, getting diagnosed earlier and still mm -hmm. wanting to have kids. And yes, it's great that you're, um, you know, as an example, and also just pushing the research forward so that mm -hmm. um, down the line, people can feel even more comfortable. Yeah. I just it. wished I could I could help all these women. Sometimes I think I need uh, uh, like a video consulting online for women. So maybe maybe on PrexPark, the website, I will create like some uh, some just consulting moments for groups. Women just can can enroll and uh, just ask me questions because yeah. I'm one of yeah. I think it's there are not many gynecologists in the world that know something about pregnancy or women's issues and also about Parkinson's. Just uh, from also a doctor's perspective, but also the patient's perspective. And, yeah, and I, I mean, I would just think the in any situation, like the fear, uncertainty, unknowns mm -hmm. is like, it's already huge, right? And yeah. add to the fact that you don't know if you're doing something wrong to yourself or wrong to the baby. And that's a mm -hmm. really tough decision. So yeah, yeah I mean, that's a really important thing that would be great to have for people. And mo most people are like the, the, the partner or the family. Most people are worried about the baby, but I was really, maybe it's, I, I, it's selfish, but I was really worried about myself. Actually, yeah. That was a topic that was really not, we didn't speak about it, but for me, it was like, yeah, but what about me? I don't want to really progress that much and be physically incapable of taking care of my child. And then I have a healthy baby, but. Right. Yeah. yeah. And like you said, you, you are dealing with all of the other people in your life mm -hmm. that have an opinion. Don't do it. We can't do it. You want to do it. You shouldn't do it. You should do it. Yeah. yeah people have lots of opinions. It's right? also when you, you have a diagnosis like this, people also tend to feel like they can just spread their, their, um, me, their, how do you say that? Their, what they think. Yeah. yeah, on you to, uh, well, I am just a mature woman and I can make my own decisions. 
Black is more black. And they do the same thing when you're pregnant too, right? Like when people get pregnant, even without Parkinson's, they tell you all the things you should do 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 that and you shouldn't do. Yeah. uh, We're just all grown ups and uh, (laughs) yeah, we have our own ideas. Yeah. 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 So we managed. (laughs) Well, thank you so much. I'm really happy I I, I got pregnant because Josephine is really the most Aww. happy baby that I, yeah, she's always smiling. She's oh, like really nice. my dopamine and my secret extra dopamine. <laughs> pill I, I, I take every day. Yeah. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah. Polly and I are always looking at pictures of uh, you and the babies and throwing. Yeah. So that's, a, that's great. She's so happy, but the other kids are also so nice. Uh, it's sweet to her helping out and we just have so much fun together. Yeah. Well, that's I hope great. it stays that way for a long time. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for doing this today. I really appreciate it. And Mm -hmm. I know our community is going to appreciate it too. So thank you. You're welcome.